So, we pulled the trigger and got that brand new DJI drone. The box is open, the smell of new tech is in the air, and now the drone is sitting there looking expensive. Right now, you're probably feeling excited, along with a healthy dose of fear. Fear that hundreds, if not thousands of pounds, is going to go cartwheeling into the nearest tree. You've seen the epic drone shots, but you've also heard the horror stories. And that is exactly why we're here. This isn't just another tutorial. This is your ultimate survival guide. We're going to cover the essential checks you need to do before you leave home and guide you through your first smooth take all to make sure that your drone gets home safely. That feeling of your heart pounding as the drone sits there, totally normal. The number one anxiety for new pilots is the crash. But what if I told you that most crashes are completely avoidable? By the end of this guide, you'll have the confidence and the checklist to turn that anxiety into excitement. Ensuring your drone has a long and happy life in the sky and not spending its time in a repair shop. Okay, before we even dream of going outside, our survival mission starts right here at home. Getting this part correct is 90% of the battle, and it's the most important phase for keeping our drones safe. First up, power. You need to fully charge your drone's intelligent flight batteries and your controller before every single flight. It sounds ridiculously obvious, but overestimating your battery life is a classic rookie mistake that will end in a forced landing. You'll either slide the battery into the charging hub or a USB-C cable into the back of the drone. The lights will then do a little dance to let you know it's charging. And when they're full, it will either show the lights solid or the lights will turn off. Do the same for your controller. A dead controller mid-flight is a special kind of panic you don't need in your life. Next, the hardware itself. Before powering up your drone, always remember to remove the gimbal protector. This little bit of plastic is often forgotten by new pilots and is a fast way to get a gimbal stuck error or damage your gimbal when powering on the drone. Next, we're going to unfold the arms. Now, there is no secret order to this. Just be gentle and unfold them carefully. And don't force them. Now take five seconds to check the propellers. Make sure there's no nicks, no cracks, or no bending in the propellers themselves. A damaged prop can cause the drone to be unbalanced and is a sure way for your drone to go tumbling out of the sky. It's a tiny check that could save you from a huge headache. Now for a critical piece of gear, the micro SD card. Yes, you may have internal storage in your drone, but if you want to record high quality video, you're going to want to make sure you have an SD card. You want to make sure your SD card is one of the recommended ones. UHS-1 speed grade 3. The slot is usually in the back of the drone. You insert the card, wait for the little click as you push it in, and the card is now in there securely. But for goodness sake, make sure the card isn't full from your last adventure. I also insert the micro SD card into my RC2 controller. That way if I want to do screen recordings or if I forget the card for my drone, I have a spare one now in my controller. Let's now prep the controller. If your sticks on the controller are detachable, you'll find them either at the bottom of the controller or at the back of the controller, depending on which controller you have. You just need to tighten them in finger tight. You don't need to crank these down. Now it's time to power everything on. There is an order to this. Always, always turn on the controller first 
and then the drone. The sequence for this is the same for both. A short press followed by a long press. You'll hear the startup chime and the lights will come on. This lets them both find each other and establish a solid connection. With everything on, the DJI Fly app is our final check. This is your cockpit. There are three areas you absolutely must verify before you fly. First, do a quick check for firmware updates. The app will yell at you normally when the updates are available, but you can also check this manually. Keeping your firmware updated is crucial for safety and stability. It's always better to do this at home with good Wi-Fi, rather than in the middle of a field with limited mobile signal while the sun's setting. Now the rest of the process we would normally do in situ when we're ready to fly. So the next two items, I cannot stress the importance of these enough. Always wait for a GPS lock. Look in the top corner of the app for the satellite symbol and make sure you have at least 10 satellites connected and you hear the home point updated message Homepoint from the updated. app. Don't rush this. Without a good GPS lock, your drone is flying blind and that important return to home isn't going to know where home is. There is an exception to this and this is the advanced return to home. Now with this, it doesn't require satellites to find the home point. It will go back to the point where you took off but I still recommend making sure you have that important satellite lock before you take off. Next, check the return to home altitude in the safety settings in the app. You wanna make sure that if you're flying an area, say with 50 foot trees, you set the altitude to 100 foot so you can avoid any obstacles in the area. If your drone ever loses signal and initiates a return to home, it will rise to this height and clear any obstacles like buildings, trees, power cables. Ignoring this is how a drone will crash itself on the way home. Also, you may have obstacle avoidance on your drone, but remember that twigs and cables are not gonna be detected. And trees are an issue, especially when they're losing their leaves, as the small twigs can't be detected. Other things you will wanna get in the habit of checking are the weather, checking for wind speeds and gust speeds, making sure they are within the parameters of your drone. You can use things like UAV forecast or air data UAV. Those are two apps that I use. Um, there are others available. And the next thing is to make sure you've checked that you can fly in the area you intend to go to. That it's not a no-fly zone or has any restrictions. Okay pre-flight checklist is done, our batteries are charged, our hardware is inspected and all systems are go. Now we've done all the groundwork, it's time to move on to the main event. The kind of spot you want to pick for your first flight is an open area, no buildings, no people, no power lines and especially no trees. Drone magnets, every single one of them. Giving yourself a massive buffer zone is the best way to build confidence without any risk. Obstacle avoidance is a good tool, but there's no need to test it just yet, as that's a sure way to crash your drone. Go ahead and place the drone on a flat surface. Cheap landing pad is a great investment to keep grass and dirt out of your camera and gimbal and off your props. With the drone and the controller now connected, and all of the pre-flight checks done, it's now time to fly. There are two ways to get airborne. You can pull both control sticks down and inwards to start the motors, then gently push the left stick up. But for your first time, I strongly recommend the easy button. On the left of your screen, tap the takeoff icon, press and hold the circle that pops up. The drone's motors will spin up and you'll gracefully lift off and hover about four feet in the air. And there it is, you're flying. You're probably feeling a rush of adrenaline right now, 
So here is the single most important thing in this whole guide. The golden rule of drone survival. If you start to panic, just let go of the sticks. That's it, let go. Thanks to GPS, the drone will stop dead in its tracks and hover perfectly in place. Think of it as your personal pause button. If you get disorientated, just take your hands off of the controls and the drone will patiently hover in place and wait for you. Now, let's try some baby steps. Your left stick is for up, down and rotating. Push it up, it goes up. Push it down, it goes down. Push left or right to spin the drone in place. Your right stick is for direction. Push forward to move it forward. Pull it back, it moves backwards. Push it left, it moves left. Push it right, the drone will move to the right. The key here is to be gentle. Make small, smooth inputs. Don't jam the sticks to the edge, just nudge them. Fly up to about 20 feet, fly forward 50 feet, fly back and rotate around 360 degrees. Spend your first few flights just getting a feel for how it responds. Stay low and stay close. This isn't the time for hero shots. So, you've done a few laps, you're feeling more confident, and now it's time to bring it home. Just like with the takeoff, we have a couple of options to bring it home, and we're going to use the safest option. We're going to now use the return to home feature. Find the H button on the remote or the RTH icon in the app. Press and hold it. The drone will beep and start its journey home. It will climb to the safe altitude you said earlier when using standard return to home, or it will follow the flight path if using the advanced return to home and fly back to its takeoff spot and land itself all on its own. This feature is your safety net. It's designed to save your drone when the battery gets low or the signal is lost. It's the safest way to return to home, so let it do its job. Once it's on the ground, then we power everything off. Drone first, then the controller, the reverse order we did earlier. And that's it. You've done your first flight and your drone is now safely home. If this guide helped you calm your nerves and gave you the confidence to finally get a fly in, then please do me a favor and give this video a like. It genuinely helps the channel. And for more tutorials that'll take you from a beginner to a confident pilot, then please hit the subscribe button so you don't miss a video. That fear you had at the beginning has probably been replaced with a huge sense of accomplishment. And so it should. Flying a drone is an incredible experience, but being prepared is what keeps it fun. Take what you've learned today, especially the pre-flight checklist, and turn it into a habit. And if you remember only one thing from this survival guide, let it be, if in doubt, hands off the sticks, and let the drone's incredible technology help you out. Now get back out to that open field, keep practicing slow, steady movements, and build your confidence one flight at a time. Have fun and fly safe. And I'll see you again in the next video.